All right. Welcome back, everybody. We are super excited to be engaging with you on PBC's Empowerment and Possibilities service. Today, we have a very unique and a very special guest with us. I'm going to introduce her very shortly. But to all of our viewers from across the continent, across the geographies, across the nations of the world, all of our members, all of our subscribers, we love you. We thank you for your continued support of God's church to all of our regional hubs and our stewards and ministers thereof. We salute you. And I want to thank you again for all of the work you're doing for the kingdom. The God Almighty, who we serve and who we love in PBC, he will surely reward you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, I have with us a precious, precious sister, a lover of God and all things pure and true, and also a very decorated career professional. Her name is Oinda Molakombi. And I'm going to read a bio very shortly, and then we're going to go into God's agenda. Oinda is the CFO of Synlab Nigeria, which is a subsidiary of Synlab Europe, this is the largest medical diagnostics provider in Europe and the leading and largest medical diagnostics provider in Nigeria. She is a chartered accountant, a fellow of the ACCA, with over 15 years of experience in finance, spanning across various sectors in multiple multinational com corporations. She holds a BSc in Information Systems Engineering from the University of Manchester, UK, she has a BSc in Applied Accounting from Oxford Brookes University in the UK as well. She has a Master's in International Banking and Finance from the University of Salford in the UK. She's happily married and she has two beautiful children just like I do. She has two beautiful girls. She lives in Lagos. She travels the world several times over. She's a lover of God and she's a passionate, passionate and avid supporter of all things excellence. Oinda, it's an absolute joy having you with us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Wonderful. Um, today's PBC Possibilities and Empowerment Series is going to be focused on a particular theme that has been inspired by the Holy Spirit. And as is our custom in the Prevailing and the Borderless Church, we try to follow the ways of God and His leading through His Spirit. And whenever we do that, we find that the Church of Christ is edified, the people are blessed, God is glorified, and we advance forward. This series is inspired by God to make people believe that with God truly all things are possible and that it is possible to be a member of the kingdom of God without compromising on your Christian integrity and at the same time shining your light. So with that said, the topic for today's it's a sermon and it's a message if you will but it's presented in a different style, is being a light in the marketplace. Being a light in the marketplace. Our anchor scripture is Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. And I'm going to turn it over to Oyinda first to give us a little bit of her background and her story of how God has helped her to accomplish all that I just read. And more, there's so much more than I could have said and I'm sure you, you will come to know as she, as she begins to speak. She is a loaded cannon bomb of grace. <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all, just prepare. This is, about to be, this is about to be a glorious one. So over to you, my dear sister. All right. Thank you, my dear brother. Um, okay. Uh, my journey, uh, it's been an interesting one, I must say. It, um, finding myself, and uh, as you read my bio, right, I started from IT. Now I'm in accounting. Mm. How did I even get there? How did I figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and honestly, what my life has taught me thus far is that, you know, God is intentional about every single part of your life. So what may seem bad is mm. still part of his divine plan to get you to where you should be. Come on. So where it all started from, at least for, with my, my education, my um, degrees, um, my first degree was in IT. I did it. I didn't like it. <laughs> 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 that was just it in a nutshell. 
But somewhere inside of me, I'd always loved numbers, right from secondary school. Mm. I'd had this conversation with my dad. He thought, oh, why don't you do IT? This was when the dot-com boom started, right? In the <laughs> late 90s, early 2000s, early 2000s. right? Um, and IT was the thing then. So it was just almost like, oh, he, he was nudging me. Well, bless his heart. But he just felt that's the next big thing. You should be positioned there. And at the time, I wasn't sure what I wanted. So I went with the flow. I finished it, hated it and thought, okay, what is my first love? Like, right. where did, what do I enjoy doing? Uh, for me, I found IT so abstract, you know, computing. How do you get the program to become the windows that you mm -hmm. see and all of that? So anyway, um, went back and then, you know, sad, I really had to see God because I was lost. <laughs> you know, it was like, I just finished this degree. My father spent a lot of money and I hated it. And I definitely knew I didn't want to build a career in it. And I went back to God and spent a lot of time in his presence, literally crying sometimes because mm. I just needed to figure out what I was supposed to be doing. And it's in one of those sessions that he dropped back, you know, my first, what is, what was, what's your first love? What do you enjoy doing? And it's numbers. Mm. Even during my IT degree, I did a few um, finance courses and I really, really enjoyed them. So I thought, okay, yeah, okay. Finance, let's see how this goes. And then that's what led me to do my master's. I enjoyed that mm. and then thought, hmm, um, I'm not quite ready to work yet. I want to do some a professional course of some sort. So what should I do? I like accounting. Um, and then somehow started off ACCA and absolutely enjoyed it. And then I guess that cemented it in my mind that I wanted to become an accountant. So mm. I thought, okay. But I, I knew deep down, I didn't just want to be your regular accountant, mm. right? But again, I, of course, I had to get experience to be able to get mm. the roles because I didn't have a first degree in that and all that. So um, I started off with temp jobs. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. The basics. Oh, the basics. I was ready to do everything anything you threw at me. It didn't matter if I was overqualified. So literally the jobs I was applying for were jobs of A-levels mm. that were looking for A-level um, um, graduates as um, students um, or maybe first degrees. And I already had a master's at this point, right? And was doing a professional course, mm. but it, it didn't matter. Junior level roles, right? That you would think seemingly are beneath your qualifications. I threw my heart into it. I would go to walk to agencies. If they had something for just two weeks, I was ready to do it. And that's how I started to build my experience. At the time, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But now, in hindsight, looking back, I am grateful mm. for those opportunities because that gave me the foundation of what I do now. So now at work, I can talk to anyone at whatever level. That's right. <laughs> because at some point, I've done the job you're doing. Because, and you know, sometimes, you, as I said, you never understand why God is taking you through that process, process right? But because he's building you, mm. he's building capacity. He knows what you would need in the future. Mm. So he's working on you now to get it. Mm. So when that opportunity comes, you are ready. And that's that's my story in a nutshell, you know. And I'm grateful for the journey so far. If I if I continue, we'll probably not finish and move oh, on, no, you is... know. But it, he's always just directed me somehow. Okay, so started off with the junior level roles. Even coming back to Nigeria, mm. I remember moving to the UK in '99. I was around about 15. I landed in the UK, and I knew. The moment I landed in the UK, I was meant to come back to Nigeria. I knew, again, you know, and we'll probably talk about that much later on, how yeah. you how God speaks to you. That's right. You know, you have to understand that as a Christian. Yes. Because he will speak to you about every single aspect of your life. Mm. Who to marry, you know, even when to have children, anything. And if you would involve him, mm. he will tell you, you just have to ask. If. If you will involve him. If you would involve him. And that's what I found that even at work, sometimes I'm confused and I'm like, Holy Spirit, help me. And in that moment, I get clarity. Mm. And it's almost like, you know, I just start picking things apart little by little and it starts to make sense. And I'm able to piece it together. By the time I explain it, it's like, wow, how did you get that? And I'm looking at them like, it's just God. <laughs> We have an advantage. Yes, we do. Those of us in this kingdom have an advantage. I, I don't know if you if you if you all are just listening to that which my dear sister has just shared with us. Because I picked up on so many things. I mean, I told you this this lady is 
<laughs> she's a fireball of grace. I'm telling you. I picked up on so many things already. Number one, the importance of inquiring from God. Yes. Just from the five minutes that she has shared with us. Number two, I picked up on the importance of going back to your strengths and what you love. Mm. When in doubt, seek the face of God primarily. And then, what did God give you as natural strengths? She loved numbers. And that was a major decision-making process for you. Yes. I love numbers as well. It's the reason why God, one of the reasons why God <laughs> sent me to the United States, it was on the premise of, of SAT math, actually. Oh, really? It was awesome. SAT math that gave me a scholarship to go study in the uni, in, in university in wow. the United States. So, so many mutual sort of interests slash similarities in terms of background. I, I hear from her. She's in accounting finance. I'm in accounting finance right she loves numbers i love numbers she has two children i have two children <laughs> it, it's, it's really amazing and then she did a temp job at the very beginning which means do not despise the days of little beginnings. oh yes very important very, you know very important. and and i i also took an unpaid internship mm. when i was trying to get my career started mm. and in hindsight i am beyond grateful to god for that so what advice would you give to God's children watching right now or just anyone actually who's wa just watching us right now listening to this message, this sermon that is saying to themselves, I don't currently like my, my role. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's beneath me. Um, I ought to be doing something bigger and better. Can you explain to them how, how that everything matters? Oh, yes. Please. Um, <laughs> for me, whatever you find to do, mm. do it with all your heart. That's what the Bible says. Mm. And that's what I always remind myself. Mm. That God has placed me where I am. He has a purpose. Right? He knows what he's doing. And I have to trust him. And in that moment, when I shift the focus from myself to God, I find strength. Mm. Sometimes it's not easy, <laughs> you yeah. know, you get to work. And there was a time in, in Manchester, I was working in one of the branches, just, again, just because I wanted to just get experience. I was the only graduate. The branch manager was not a graduate. Mm. The assistant branch manager was not a graduate. In fact, I was a graduate doing my MSc. Mm. And I looked around me and I thought, what's going on? <laughs> you know, but... Again, I am grateful for that experience because it taught me retail, mm. cash handling, mm. which now, I mean, the company I work in has retail outlets. That's right. You know, now I can, I can come up with internal controls on how to, you know, close off your till at the end of the day mm. to ensure that the monies collected, you know, are correct and accurate. Yeah. How do you remit that? And if I hadn't gone through that experience, I wouldn't be able to connect or relate with that now. Mm. So for me, um, what I would advise anyone who's going through that right now, trust God. Mm. Whatever it is, don't get discouraged. God knows what he's doing. You have to trust your maker. Mm. You have to. He said before, before, <laughs> before we, you know, we, we were formed, before he, we were formed in, his, um, in our mother's womb, he knew us. That's right. He had set out what he wanted us to do. So guess what? Whatever it is you're doing is all part of God's grand plan. Mm. It may not look pretty. Mm. It may not feel like it, but it is all part of God's grand plan and you have to trust him. Mm. You know, so for me, I would say, if I were you, I would continue. Just continue till you get clarity. And trust me, when God wants you to move, he will open another door. Mm. He will open another door. Mm. Very, very important. And, and that's one thing I've learned. Mm -hmm. There are times when I've been in jobs and I felt I've been underpaid. You know, there's so many instances. In fact, there was one and I thought, God, why am I here? You know, and I work with numbers. And you get to see things. And then you wonder, okay. It's not, it's, the math is not math. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on in terms of qualifications, experience? Mm. Whereas what's going on? But I've learned to... Um, hold my own and trust God. Mm. So, yes, he's, this person might be paid double. That's them. Yeah. <laughs> That's them 
Yeah. You know, for you, what does God want for you? Why are you here? Maybe you're not here for the salary yet. Mm. You know, there, there, there are different reasons why we're at different places of work all through our career. That's right. There's times when you're just getting getting the experience and the salary is not the focus at the time, yeah, right? And there's a time when, oh, yes, you've, yes, you've paid your dues. It's now time for God to reward you. Yes. You know, and it's going back to that scripture again, don't, don't go weary in um, doing good mm. because if you don't faint, you will reap. In due season. In due season. That's right. So, and a lot of times, I feel we don't get our reward because we give up too soon. We faint. We yeah. faint. Yeah. You know, so for me, just focus on God. He's the one who gives peace. Wow. And clarity. He's the only one who can tell you when to go. And trust me, when it is time, you will know. Yeah. You will know. And whatever it is you're doing, do it joyfully. Mm. Another key point. That's one thing I learned. That's right. Because the moment you you move, remove joy from it, it becomes a burden. It becomes a burden. Mm. <laughs> I hope you all are taking notes because I could have counted, I think, I think three or four scriptures that Oinja just cited. In answering that question, she started by talking about trusting in God. Proverbs 3, 5. Yes. Trust in God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all mm -hmm. of your might, and lean not on your own understanding. You may not understand it, but in all of your ways, acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. Oh, yes. He always she spoke does. about that. She spoke about whatever you had find it to do, do it well. Yeah. That is Colossians 3.23. She spoke about that. She spoke about before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew thee. This is Jeremiah 1.5. God speaking to Jeremiah, but now to you. Mm. Before he formed you in your mother's womb, he had a grand plan. Yes. He had a grand plan. Forget about Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, the greatest director of the movie of your life is God. Yes. And his directorship is unquestionable. You know, and then she spoke about joy. Joy is an economy that sustains, quite frankly, anything that you want to do. Rejoice evermore, the Bible says. The Bible says, be glad in all of your works. Mm. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. rejoice. So, joy is a currency. It really is. Yes, it is. And where there is joy, and you know, joy is not happiness. No, it's not. <laughs> you know, joy is divine. It is a fruit of the Spirit. Yes. Happiness is man-made and is temporary. If I gave you ice cream, you'll be happy. If I took your ice cream away from you, you will not be happy. <laughs> I mean, there is Cold Stone right here and there's Ben and Jerry's and all. If I gave you ice cream, I mean, that's just, it's just a simple, you know, analogy. Yeah. Because it's your, your happiness was dependent upon the availability of the ice cream. Of that one thing. Of yeah. that one thing. So if that one thing is taken away from you, mm -hmm. all of a sudden your happiness evaporates. Because yes. it is man-made and nothing that is man-made is, is eternal. True. But joy mm. is, regardless of what I'm going through, Yes. Regardless of my positioning, yes. even though this is not making sense, even though the math is not mathing, <laughs> I choose to be joyful. Yes. And there's another subtle thing that you, you spoke on that I, I picked I picked upon right there. You said when you were in the UK, for example, you looked around you and from a degree standpoint, you were massively over overqualified. Oh, yes. Of, so that speaks of humility. Mm. And the ability to go through the process. Oh, yes. God is a God of process. Yes. <laughs> He's a God of process. And, and, and God cares more about the process than He cares about the end. Mm. He cares more about the process than He cares about the end. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all, all things, things work together, together for good. good. Yes. To a category of people and we're going to get there. Yes. <laughs> to those that love no. God. Yes. Before the end of this sermon and message, we're going to give you an opportunity to really love God mm -hmm. and to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because Oina mentioned something about we in this kingdom, we have an advantage. Oh, yes. And that advantage is light. So that is a perfect segue to, you know, being a light in the marketplace. Oina, you are a bright, bright light, just brilliant light in the marketplace, put there by God and functioning in, in a dual role. Sure, as the CFO of an incredible institution, but also pretty much as an apostle, if you will, because <laughs> you are representing light there. Yes. Matthew 5.16, 
What does that mean to you? Perhaps you look at it from the message scripture. Yes, um, I think I would read it because when you mentioned it, I thought it's interesting. This scripture has been with me since I was in Sunday school. Wow, it must have been five or six. Probably the first memory verse I that stuck in, so I know it like <laughs> by heart. <laughs> so when you said, I thought, wow. I, I would read the um, I would read the message translation, especially the you know how the message sort of clumps up mm-hmm. verses. Mm-hmm. But I would read the towards the end. I said, "If I make you light bears, you don't um, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? Mm. You know." And says, "I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you on there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Mm. Keep open house." Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, wow. His generous Father in heaven. That is why our light must shine. Wow. It's in shining our light that we touch lives and bring people into the kingdom of God. Mm. It's in shining our light that people experience God. Mm. We are supposed to be the epistles that men read. Come on. So in how you do your work, you're evangelizing. Trust me, someone somewhere knows there's something different about Brother Dam. They can see it. Do you understand? And hopefully, over lunch, tea break, coffee break, whatever it is, you may just get that opportunity mm. to then share why you're different. Mm. So it's very, very important in everything you do. You have to remember we're ambassadors of Christ. Come on. And that is what being a light is. You are an ambassador of Christ. Who is the original light? God. Mm. Jesus Christ. That's right. He has given us that light so we can then shine. You know, I, I was just, it, I had another scripture when I was, I was just preparing for this. Um, I think it was in John. And it said, yes, that's it. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. John 1.4. John 1.4. Mm. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never, come on, never extinguish it. Speak. <laughs> that's the NLT translation. And I stopped when I was, I thought, that's it. We are supposed to shine our light. And as I meditated on it, it, it just, I had this vision of, you know, you know, the Chinese, Chinese lanterns, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how these are just light up. You can imagine in, in the darkness, one by one. And together, it's an undeniable light. Every, everywhere is lit everywhere. up. Everywhere. Everywhere is lit up. Mm. And that's what we're supposed to. God has sent us out like little lanterns wherever we are now in the marketplace. And we are meant to shine. We, that is our purpose. We, can, we cannot but do it mm. because that's the only way darkness would flee. And guess what? Darkness can never comprehend light. Hmm. It can never extinguish. It can try, mm-hmm. but it can never do it. That's the truth. Hmm. You know, and it's, I had so many points of this and I thought, you know, so many times darkness tries. Mm-hmm. Right now, darkness is trying. Mm-hmm. But guess what? We are light. We will prevail. Come on. We will prevail. Come on. You know, so uh, for me, that, 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 that's, that's, that's what light is. Light, light is undeniable you can't mm. when you see light you know yeah. when you turn on the light in a dark room you know the light has come on it's amazing that you know man it's amazing that that verse of scripture Matthew five sixteen, has been with you since childhood yes and as I was waiting on God to give me intel about what to talk about regarding this particular message for today with you you know, Matthew 5.16 was what he dropped on my heart. And he said, awesome. Let my spirit speak through my daughter about this, both in terms of scriptural and in terms of the practical. And you're doing exactly that. Mm-hmm. You know, you mentioned someone taking out, you know, taking you out for like coffee in the workplace saying, why is it that everything you do somehow just thrives? Yes. And then you introduce Jesus. Yes. And it's funny because Matthew 5.16 never said, let your light shine. It says, let your light so. So, so. yes. <laughs> it's, it's amazing that when we, if we read scriptures too fast, we're going to miss the revelation. Yes. There. That means God is telling us, don't withhold. Just yes. release yes. this light. 
there is this thing we especially i don't know if it's just africans or if it's nigerians or if it's west africans we call we we we, we do this false humility thing yes <laughs> Especially, among, I know, I know what I you know, mean. Especially amongst religious folk. Yes, I know what you mean. We do this false boy, you know. We use, you know, not shining as an excuse to say, "Oh God, I'm just being humble." But but humility is not the same thing as mediocrity. No, it's not. You know, according to Matthew five sixteen, both in the Message translation and in the KJV, that says, "So, so. if we do not shine, we are denying God glory." True. And God doesn't joke with his glory. Very true. So this this false humility syndrome, is what I would call it, has to be put away. It is possible to be light and to still be humble. Yes. Please speak to that. <laughs> you know, because I, let your light so shine before men. Your job. Three categories of people there. We in the marketplace our job is to shine. Yes. Second category of people is men in the marketplace, meaning the people in the marketplace observe our good works, which yes. is light. Yes. The third category of person is God. He receives his glory as a result of his children, Oinda, yes. in this case, shining. So three categories of people, one verse. Please help me understand this. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you know, I've heard once before that God cannot, God can only move through men on earth. Mm. Come on, come on. Because on earth, he's a spirit, right? Come that's on. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. And that's why he needs us. Yes, ma'am. You know, so we do a disservice to God mm. when we don't do what we're supposed to do, which is shine. And sometimes it may never, you know, you might not feel like you have enough light to shine. I, mm. I've been mm. there. Mm. What do you think? <laughs> what do I have? <laughs> but I feel God is always saying, what's in your hand? Mm. That's with that. If it's one person you can touch at work, start with that. And sometimes it's not just, you know, it's not, it goes beyond just sharing the scriptures, how you do your work. Yes, ma'am. Right? How, for me, I'm like, even being helpful, mm. even being a problem solver, it's my pastor who says solution provider mm. is shining your light because guess what you know when you read Daniel and Joseph those are the two examples vivid examples I think of, of you know men that shone their light in the marketplace mm. right because they were not necessarily David um, sorry Daniel sort of was a prophet right but really primarily he was officiating or in the cabinet in the cabinet more or less yeah so he was that was what when he came to uh, Babylon mm. that was what Let's say headhunted more or less for right. right, and um, every time he did it, and did not um, quiver or bow down to the darkness, mm. God's name was always glorified. Mm. If you notice, the kings would say, "No, your," they would praise his God. Hi. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, same thing. They would praise his God. Mm. because it was undeniable mm. they knew this was not and they would say it that man could not have done this you know it couldn't have been our gods the idols they were worshipping right so for me you know anytime I read and study Daniel and also even Joseph too when Joseph had the wisdom to mm. interpret the, the dreams in, um, for Pharaoh right. as well in Egypt he, he, it was undeniable Pharaoh had to say, look, there's no one else who can do this but you. Mm. If you've interpreted it, you will carry, you would execute. Mm. Because it, it is clear it is God that gave you this revelation. That's right. You know, so for me, shining your light is something, as Christians, is something we cannot run, we should not run away from. It's not optional. It's not optional. That is the purpose for which we were created. Yes. And the truth of the matter, again, is the fact that, look, we are all here for a purpose. There are certain people whose lives are affected by your light, right? So if you refuse to shine, then you do them a disservice. That's they right. They probably would never experience God. Speak on it, sis. You know, so we have to walk with that understanding. Now, speaking to what you mentioned earlier about humility or false humility, for me, what is behind what you're saying or what you're doing? 
we always have to remember there's there's a spirit, there's a thought behind it. And that's what I always used to question, you know, sort of um, check myself, as yes. it were. Like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Correct. Am I tooting my horn just because that's I right. want to feel good and, again, feel like, oh, I've achieved something? Or is it because, no, I know all this is possible because of God. Mm-hmm. And for as long as you are focused on that, on God, the maker, the creator. Yes. The master planner. That's right. Then you're on the right path. That's right. It's not false humility at that point. You know, it's yeah. not it's not being proud, as it yes. were, at that point. Because we, I, I feel the church most times is because they're scared of the pride. Mm-hmm. Then they fall into, into yeah exactly. Yeah, but there, there's, a, <laughs> you know, Daniel was well aware of what he carried. Oh yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were well aware of what they carried. We, hey, <laughs> to the extent that even when decrees, as we are beginning to see in our world today, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. that were contrary to the word of God, they stood firm mm-hmm. because they knew. Mm who they work for mm. and what they carried. Mm. And they would speak truth to power, mm. even when it seemed like it would cost them their lives. Someone else might think that's pride, but no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a confidence in the God that you serve. Ah. And that's the difference. It's funny because you mentioned the three Hebrew boys, and I love the fact that one of my favorite parts of scriptures where it says, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer mm. you in this manner. <laughs> the God we serve, yes. again, not being bashful about their light shining, mm-hmm. he's able to save us. And even if he does not, <laughs> make no mistake, we will not bow down to darkness, pretty much is what they were saying. Yes. You know, and as you said, without question, every single time, without fail, that Children of light in the marketplace have shone their light. It has brought God tremendous glory. Yes. And it has turned those who were once upon a time in darkness into light. Yes. yes. Because if if I know my Bible at all, scripture tells me that, like you said, a decree was passed mm-hmm. that the God of Daniel, after the lions then chat and matter, yeah. will become the God that they must serve. No. Serve, yes. It's amazing just because somebody was 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 bold enough to shine yes. their light and not not bask in what we call again this false humility syndrome. And um it's a very, very, very important piece that I just thought God wants to address because I don't know who is out there watching us who's saying, well, I don't know if I you know I don't want to shine because you know no 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 if you do not shine number one, you are flouting scriptures. Mm-hmm. The Bible tells us in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine. It says before 14 and 15, it says, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel. Because if you do that, you're denying everyone yeah. yes. in the house the brilliance and the efficacy of such light. Yes. Rather, put it on a hilltop so everybody can see. That's the And then if it's not, if it's not clear enough, look at Isaiah 60 and verse 1. It says, arise, shine. shine. Yes. That one is even more pointed. It's like a command. <laughs> yes. Because your light has come. Um, yes. And the glory. Mm-hmm. Anywhere you see light in scripture, you see glory there. Yes. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and, and glorify. glorify. Yes. So light and glory are attached to yes. the giver of light. Yes. That's God. So if you don't shine, you are denying God. And God, God, is, God is very jealous about his glory. Mm-hmm. You know, and you said God moves on earth through men. Men meaning male and female. I'm mm-hmm. using men now in the by gender term. Yes. He 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 moves on God helps men through men. Mm-hmm. God, you know, establishes his kingdom here on earth through men. Yes. As was the Genesis one twenty six mandate, you know, and Genesis one twenty eight, very specifically, the dominion mandate that was given to us. Let us do it. It's really, really amazing, you know, this way. Now, besides a good sort of character, like you said, helping people, mm-hmm. you know, in the place of work, what other ways can someone shine their light in the marketplace? Um, maybe more specifically now, maybe like in, in, in bullet points, if you will, um, regardless of industry. 
Mm. Because some people might be thinking, well, Winda is in accounting and finance. <laughs> Dami is in like finance and accounting. Both of them work in the finance world. So maybe what they're saying is specific to finance. No, it's not specific to finance. You know, so like being being diligent, excellence, all those those things are are, are non the industry agnostic, if you will. Yes. So some thoughts. What, have, mean, what, have, what, have, what has helped you? So uh, I think for me, excellence. Ah, oh, gosh, that's why I, I had bet. to go study Daniel. It's interesting that when I became CFO, I had to go back and study Daniel again. Mm. And I think Nehemiah. Mm-hmm. Because I was well aware that this bowl I just gotten was divine, right? God orchestrated it for that's a reason. Right. Because again, when I look at my life, I always wonder, I didn't actually feel qualified for it at the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. You know, so excellence for me is key. And excellence is not just, it's, it's doing things well, right? It has to be if there's a task at work, you have to go above and beyond. You have to be dependable. Now, why do I say this? Because, you know, we say these things, um, one of the key skills that, that most employers would look for, problem solving. Yes. And that's because every organization has, has problems. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> you want your light to shine, please go where the problem oh, is. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Go Did where that... that? <laughs> Did you catch that? That's 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 his that's his secret right there. Go where the problem is. Don't run away from problems. Yes. And if you look at mm. Joseph, Daniel, mm. it was Maya. problems that brought their light out. That's right. And it shone so brightly. And for me, I've now I've come to now understand that it's almost like problems and God almost works to, so it's like this problem happened and God is placing you there mm. to solve it, to give clarity. That's shining your light practically. And yes. that, that goes beyond, beyond finance, right? Of course. It's in every sector, everywhere. Um, in every, every sector, every kind of role you'll be, there's always a problem. There would always be a problem. The moment there stops being problems, we don't have jobs, technically, right? That's correct. So, that's how you shine your light. For me, that's that's worked for me. And when I say excellence, it's okay. You, you may not have all the answers. But for you to even be able to identify there's a problem and you can then start working actively to provide a solution. And that's yeah. why I say, in my church, my pastor would always say solution provider. Yeah. You know, that's what Joseph did in his time. That's what Daniel did. Yes. And it got to a point where after that, Daniel was always remembered. There is someone... Mm skilled in interpreting visions mm. they would call for him mm. and that's why you know it's interesting you look at daniel that sometimes i remember initially when i said studying i thought daniel was only only officiated or served during nebuchadnezzar's time right? four four administrations so and that's it when your light is shining regardless of who comes and goes regardless of what pharaoh what boss what manager yeah, indispensable. Exactly. Because you have cemented your place yes. by solving a problem. You will be remembered for solving a problem. Appraisal, they will remember. Mm. Dami was somewhere, he did this. He found he, he, he found a solution to something that was going on in Mexico. Mm. He helped us fix it. Our client is happy mm-hmm. because of Dami. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? So this cuts across whatever field you're in marketing right. whatever it is sales there's always a problem to solve and i feel that's where your light shines brightest mm. because god sent us to provide light the problem is the darkness we are, are the, the light. light we always have to so for me that's a practical ah, example this is great I, I i know we're coming up coming up on, on time here but this is i wish you could continue all day this is amazing <laughs> you know it, re- it really really is amazing um, problem solving is something that I think a lot of people don't give credence to um, but it is it is one of the fastest paths that God uses to raise his own children Yes, and that's just the truth um, and there is a multitude of problems out there in the world in the marketplace, in the career sphere yes. in the corporate ecosphere there are so many problems you think companies don't have problems? 
Yeah, they do. She's a CFO. She will tell you, you know, by the grace of God, you know, most of you kind of like have an idea of what I do. And my, my job is to literally work with the board and with the CEO and CFO to diagnose their problems, the financial health or ill health. Yeah. And then propose prefer. or prefer a solution, <laughs> solution that we as a firm can help them with. You know, that that's what we do. And, and it doesn't really matter whether it is the biggest or the biggest of retailers in the world, or whether it is a startup. They all have challenges. Yes. And actually, if you are an employee right now, if you have a job watching us, yes, you, you, if you have a job, you were hired to solve problems. Yes. And tell, that's that's the reason why CEOs and executives and the CFOs like Winda get paid very handsomely because they solve problems repeatedly, rinse, repeat, do again. Yes. <laughs> rinse, repeat. Like, I mean, how much of your job is putting out fires? Oh gosh, <laughs> almost every day. I mean, every <laughs> like you're just putting out fires oh, yes, again yeah. and again and again. So, one more quick thing, and I, and I think we, we 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 could begin to just close and invite God's people watching to pray with us. But then, if you do not know Jesus Christ, give you an opportunity to know Christ. Listen, she spoke about excellence, and excellence is as I like to. I'm forgive me. I'm like a child. <laughs> Being there, like a baby, I like to, I, I understand scriptures by by just brooding on words and then having the Holy Spirit ex explain it to me. Expanded. <laughs> uh -huh. So forgive those that are deep. I, I salute all of you, but <laughs> we that we are the small boys from Ikiti. <laughs> we are many in that. <laughs> so, you know, we just... In that so, uh -huh. Excellence is etymologically broken into two. Excel well, yes. and lens. It's the present continuous act mm. of standing out. Yes. You know, that's how I define excellence. The, the present thing. continuous act. Continuous. Yes. yes. Of standing out. She said doing things well consistently mm. is excellent. In fact, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You just give me another one. Look at this. <laughs> thank God. In fact, if you look at the Microsoft Office suite, Word, PowerPoint, Access, and Excel. Excel is different. Oh yeah. <laughs> Excel is as this is a be is a is a monster. It's oh, yeah. unbelievable the wonders you can do with Excel. Yes. And thank God for Microsoft Word. It's just words. I thank God for PowerPoint. It's mm -hmm. all graphics. Mm -hmm. But Excel, Excel is is such a powerful Microsoft Office tool. It stands in the class of its own. Yes. You know the GDP of countries are measured with Excel. Excel yes. Can you function as a CFO without Excel? Of course not. <laughs> can, can churches function without Excel? Yeah. No. I mean, so it's amongst the other tools in Microsoft mm. Office, it stands <laughs> out. So, yes. And that's the root of excellence. Excel, yes, so. short flow. If you can understand Microsoft Office explanation of excellence, <laughs> that is what God is saying through his servant and his daughter here. Daniel 6, 1 to 3. And it pleased King Darius to appoint of a point over his realm, 120 princes, and over them, three presidents, mm. and over the three presidents, one. one. How do you go from 120 to 3 to 1? Hmm. Verse 3. And this Daniel mm. was preferred above oh. the other three presidents. Yes. Why? Because an excellent spirit, spirit. Oh, yes. was in hmm. him. So these, these things we are saying are not just talk. These are scriptures. You know, this is a message to you. This is a sermon mm -hmm. to back up the things that we're talking about here. Amazing. Final uh, thoughts from you on so many young, you know, by God's grace in the Prevalent and Borderless Church, we have a lot of young adults, young professionals who are at varying degrees of their current career levels, entry levels, mid-level career professionals, and then those who are in the executive sort of um, realms. What, what advice would you give, you know, God's children watching and perhaps those who want to now surrender to Jesus and receive this advantage that you and I have. Because there are things you've done as CFO that you never learned in school. Very true. There, there are pockets of knowledge that you have operated in that, and projects you have, you have delivered on that when you were done, you know Mm. You are, you know. <laughs> something has changed. <laughs> this was not, you didn't learn this one in, in, in the UK. Mm. This was not something you learned in your MSc or in your MBA, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. There are pockets of knowledge that the Spirit of God can open your brain box and download into. It's an advantage we have. But this advantage is not available to anyone. It's for those who are children of light. Yes. 
and we're going to give you a chance again to come into light because again nothing happens in pvc god's church without you being given an invitation to jesus mm. that's what this is all about oinda is exemplary because she has christ that's why she's sharing with you the amazing nuggets that she's sharing with you so if you have to just cascade maybe in three four five bullets as we conclude career advice for those who are battling with imposter syndrome Mm. <laughs> and and thoughts on those who are just beginning the career you know just pointedly as as you will okay so um first thing is um just start right whatever your hand finds to do mm. again back to that if you can't get a job right now volunteer i worked in the church office wow <laughs> at some point well, I was trying to get experience. And even that was also fundamental to, you know, foundational to where I am right now. Mm. I learned things doing church finances. Amazing. You know, so please, please, wherever you are, if you can volunteer, volunteer. If it's a temp job, like I did, I did various temp jobs. Good God. <laughs> Take it up. God is going to use those experiences mm. to help you get to where it is you're dreaming of, mm. right? Nothing is too little. And again, whenever you're doing these jobs, always remember, he that is faithful in little mm. will be faithful Come in Come on, much. man. Take it as a testing period. Yes. God is testing you, right? So very, very important, first one. Um, second one is, again, we're ambassadors of Christ in the workplace, right? So whatever we're doing, we have to always remember that. Whatever we do is a reflection of Christ. Mm. In Nigeria, you know, again, uh, you know, I've worked in the city, but in Nigeria, there's so many things. We're, we're a very, very religious nation in Nigeria, for instance, but you find that at work, the value system mm. of most employees are wrong. Mm. If you're giving something, how do you manage it? What will be said when you leave? What's your legacy going to be? Mm. You know, I work with finances and I always have that at the back of my mind. It's not on my watch <laughs> that something goes missing because yeah. I don't want it to be said, oh, and it's that Christian mm. who managed that and certain funds went missing, right? So you're always mindful of that. It's very important that, you know, you always have to remember we're all ambassadors of Christ. I know yep. you're going to speak to that in a minute now be about becoming an ambassador of Christ, right? Okay. Um and again, our purpose is to shine God's light, right? If we don't, there's a void. Very, very important. And that's another thing I always remember that, you know, there's always, I, it's a responsibility. Now, in shining light, I now draw it back to the parable of the talents. God has given us something. Mm. You can start with a candle. A candle can become this lamp right here, right? Right. It can become... A florescent. That's right. A stages. Mm. We start somewhere, but we're not meant to be static. That's right. Right? We have a talent you mentioned about, you know, there's so many things we've done at work that you know it wasn't the knowledge from your degree that you're currently using. For instance, it's because you've taken time to also hone your skill. That's correct. And we have to remember that. We have, we start off with a certain skill set, mm. right? How do we expand on those to be able to then deliver because god moves in stages yes we are not static creatures right we're supposed to grow and right increase so, your capacity exactly so at the point you start you ha you have your response it's your responsibility to constantly develop yourself that i think a lot of people forget mm. in the quest for ex that is actually part of being an excellent spirit you know having an excellent spirit you have to develop as you grow through your career so that again is also another thing that you know you god is giving you a talent now you are expected to multiply mm. so he's giving you something it started off with numbers you have a lot for numbers i have a num lot for numbers that has now grown into the finance roles that we're in right as yes. executives it could grow into something bigger in the future yes. but we were we have horned those skills over the years yes. and we have to continue learning because guess what the next position is going to be bigger mm. 
Mm-hmm. And that's how God always works, right? <laughs> he does it. He's moving you up. Yeah. So you're not going back. And if you're at all you have to take a step back is because he wants you to learn something else you're going to need for the for next the level. Future. For, the fu- for the future. So it's important that we take that responsibility to develop ourselves. Yeah. So that when these opportunities come, when these problems come, we know what to do. Sometimes, again, it's even doing research when you identify the problem as to how best to solve it, mm. right? So um, I think I'll just sort of stop there because I, I'm, I'm sort of mindful of time. Um, Amazing. But yes, um, we have to shine our light. We do have to shine our light. Um, I, I just cannot thank you enough, Oyinda, my beloved and precious sister, for taking time out of your very busy schedule to shine your light even brighter um, on this on this wonderful and glorious day. I have no doubt that we are in the will of God. I have no doubt that God is pleased with this message this morning. And I have no doubt that God's people are blessed. Mm-hmm. Now, if you are watching us and you are joining us live, or perhaps you're watching the Aftermath replay, um, because we have so many thousands and thousands of views afterwards, you know, once our uh, service is over. And you're saying to yourself, I hear everything that you've said, Oyinda. I hear everything you've said, Dami. But I want this advantage. I want my light to, to shine so brightly. I don't even have any light right now. Um, or perhaps I'm operating on matchstick light <laughs> and I want to go to candle and from candle to lantern and from lantern to fluorescent and from fluorescent to stadium light and maybe to the sunlight it's all in stages the author and the source of light is jesus the christ we make no equivocation on this matter we stand resolute on this that jesus the christ is not just a way Mm -hmm. he is the The way way. he's not a truth he is the truth he's not a life he is the only way to eternal life. Mm. So I don't know if you're joining us from Bangladesh, from, from the Philippines, from Manila, from wherever, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Harare, wherever you're joining us from right now. If you really do not yet know Jesus Christ and you've not yet received him into your life as your personal, it's personal, Lord and Savior, this is an opportunity for you to do so. Why don't you just kindly repeat after me? It will be an utmost privilege and joy of mine and of ours to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is light himself. Just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I believe that I am a sinner. I confess my sins before you today. I do not want to walk in darkness anymore. I believe that Jesus Christ came for my sins. I believe that he died. And I believe that he rose again. I confess you, Jesus Christ, into my heart as my personal Lord and as my personal Savior. Teach me how to live. Teach me how to walk. Teach me how to talk. Please write my name in the book of life. Plant me in your custody. Watch over me in your jealousy. Don't let me go back to darkness. Never let me go. I thank you once again for saving me. And I believe that I am saved. To the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer point, just like that, you have been translated into the kingdom of light. And now you have help. Oh yes, all of the dividends of the kingdom accrue to you. You are in a new economy. You are not normal anymore. You are not normal. You have become a brand new creature. Now, there is a link in the chat box right now. That is a link providing straight to our website. Takes you about 30 seconds. We promise to keep your information very confidential. We very much respect privacy laws in this church and we will honor your confidence. We will reach out to you separately offline and we will bring you into a discipleship academy where you can grow 
with a community of Bible-believing, Jesus-loving Christians who are relatable and who are like you and who have questions lingering on their minds. It would be our utmost privilege to do that. Welcome to this family of God. Please stick with us. Continue to consume the content that the Spirit inspired that God produces through this church. And we know that you're going to be mightily blessed. All right. God bless you. Or you know, maybe say a word of prayer okay. for all those watching, those who are trusting God for their careers to turbocharge you, carry a special grace. Maybe just share a word of prayer for them so okay. that God will help them and then we will close. All right. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share our stories. Father, we know that our stories are testimonies to encourage and quicken the faith of our believers. Father, Lord, I pray I take this opportunity to touch as as as, as to touch everyone that is seeking your face for a breakthrough in their career in their finances, in their relationships, wherever it is, God. Father, I pray that, Lord, your hand will touch them. Amen. That, God, you will give them revelation. Father, Lord, I pray that you will teach them how to go about it, what to do, where to, what to, what to learn, what to, what to, who to reach out to, even on LinkedIn, wherever it is. Father, Lord, direct their path, oh God, just as you have directed ours, Lord. And I know that ultimately, through it all, your name will be glorified at the end of it, Lord. Father, Lord, I pray there will be multiple testimonies, multiple testimonies about breakthrough, career breakthroughs in the lives of our believers across the world. Yeah. Lord God, let your name alone be glorified at the end of it all. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Well, thank you also very much for this PBC possibilities and empowerment series we hope you've been mightily blessed this section will be carved out even out of this service and it will be uploaded on its own so that you can share watch share with your friends and your colleagues god bless you be a light be a light god bless you god bless you